Get it? You have to rewind to the early 1900s. It was a thrilling time of scientific discovery, but also of fierce national pride. The theory of evolution was still pretty new, and the search for the missing link was the holy grail for the new science of paleoanthropology. And national prestige was absolutely on the line. Germany had its Neanderthal fossils. France had Cro-Magnon man. But Great Britain, the intellectual home of Charles Darwin himself, had nothing. There was a real hunger for a huge, game-changing discovery on British soil. At the time, the leading theory was that the very first step in human evolution was developing a big, complex brain. Scientists fully expected to find an ancestor with a human-like skull and more primitive, ape-like features somewhere else. This brain-first idea was deeply embedded in the scientific consensus. It was this burning desire for a specific kind of ancestor, a British one with a big brain, that set the stage perfectly for a deception. The scientific community wasn't just ready for Piltdown Man, they were practically waiting for him. Section 2, The Discovery and that's when Charles Dawson enters the picture. A country lawyer by trade, Dawson was a well-known and respected amateur fossil hunter. In 1912, he sent a letter to Arthur Smith Woodward, the prestigious keeper of geology, at the British Museum, with some sensational news. Dawson claimed that, over several years, he had found pieces of a remarkable skull in a gravel pit near the village of Piltdown. That summer, Dawson and Woodward started digging together, and their discoveries were astonishing. They found more pieces of a cranium, that was undeniably human-like, with a large brain capacity. Then came the masterstroke, a piece of a lower jaw. The jawbone had been cleverly modified to look more human, but its most convincing feature was two molar teeth, which showed the flat wet pattern you'd expect from a human diet. To complete the picture, they also found primitive-looking stone tools, and the fossilized remains of extinct animals, all suggesting the find was incredibly old. Woodward was completely sold. He painstakingly pieced the skull together and, at a landmark meeting of the Geological Society of London in December 1912, announced the discovery of Eoanthropus Dawsoni, Dawson's Dawn Man. It was the perfect missing link.